about it, Frank. What do you say to telling Mary about this conversation? Mary's about the last person in the world I want to know any of this. I can understand that. The point is, your sister thinks I've been persecuting you because I suggested in print that you weren't telling the whole truth. When, in fact, you lied about the 6,500 because you're being blackmailed over an affair with Jill Coleridge. It's not blackmail. Come off it, Frank. But you've lent that kind of money to your friend, whoever he is, if he hadn't known about you and Jill. No. Then in my book, it's blackmail. I was justified in raising a few questions. And you want Mary to know about it? I want to set the record straight. I value her opinion. So do I. I know this is going to be painful for both of you. And I'm sorry about that part of it. But I haven't been unfair or irresponsible. And it matters to me that Mary understands that. So if you won't tell her, I will. You don't give me much choice, do you? If she has to know about it, I wanted to hear it from me. Ask her to come in then, will you? Sure. Finelli, two things. If for whatever reason you decide you have to write about any of this, I'd appreciate some warning. All right. And secondly, do you know there's some reason why I didn't file that claim for the 6500 but she doesn't know what it is? I uh, didn't think I had to tell her that uh, someone knew about us and then made that collateral for a loan. I don't want you to tell her about that either. I have no reason to. Good. Well, see if Mary's still waiting there for us. What was that all about, anyway? Frank wants to see you. What could you say to him that you couldn't say in front of me? He'll tell you all about it. Listen, uh, when you're through here, if you feel like it, give me a call, OK? Are you serious? If you want. Would you please tell me what's going on? escape from jail. Now can Bo keep her safe? You and I are gonna go through this together. Or will she spend the holidays back behind bars? I will have my prisoner back tonight. Watch Days of Our Lives weeknights at 6 and 11 on SoapNet. This week. This is her first Christmas without cold. Please don't go, because I need you right now. We're engaged. Oh, we just get married now. Watch One Life to Live, weekdays on ABC and weeknights at 9 on SoapNet. Bare Minerals is the original. Millions of women worldwide love Bare Minerals because it changes more than your skin. Bare Minerals will change your life. This is smooth, it's nice, and it covers. I like that. Bare Minerals is the only foundation I would ever use. Ever. 100% pure bare minerals is not like any other makeup. It looks like beautiful bare skin while it covers whatever you want it to. No matter what your skin type or condition, bare minerals is for you. Best of all, now is a great time to start going bare because right now you can get everything you need for flawless coverage. And a new favorite, Click Lock Go gives you a spill proof way to take bare minerals foundation with you anywhere. 
We also have an exclusive bonus collection worth $57.95, free. And it's all yours for more than 75% off retail. Our introductory Get Started Kit includes Bare Minerals Foundation for flawless coverage. We promise a perfect shade match or your money back. You'll also receive warmth for a healthy glow. Mineral Veil, the ultimate finishing touch. And Bare Minerals Professional Flawless Application Brush. Call right now and you'll also receive three fabulous full-size and totally free gifts, including Bare Minerals Flawless Definition Mascara. Purchased separately, you'd spend over $120. So our original Get Started Kit was a great deal at two payments of $29.99. But if you call right now, this entire seven-piece set is yours for just one payment of $29.99. That's right. Order direct and receive everything you see here for only one payment of $29.99. That's over 75% off the retail price, a savings of over $90. It's not expensive. It lasts for such a long time. Air Minerals is my miracle. With our 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. To save over 75%, call 1-800-235-3320. Esco, you can receive this handy compact. Call 1-800-235-3320 now. Dr. Coleridge, may I ask why you didn't say anything about my wife? Say anything? Now, come on. I just had a long session with her. I saw the angiograms. I understand her condition. What I don't understand is how you, as a physician can justify not having said anything. Well, uh, Doctor, this may be rather difficult for you to accept. But the fact is, your wife asked me not to tell you, and I respected her wishes. So in other words, you've been letting her walk around with a time bomb in her head, and you haven't done anything about it? Nothing of the sort. I've looked at those angiograms, and I know perfectly well what they mean. Helen and I have discussed them and what her options are. And decided to do nothing? That was Nell's decision. She had good reasons, and I didn't think it was my place to start telling her what to do. There are two aneurysms, two places in her head where the arteries are weakened so that they can go at any moment. I know what an aneurysm is. Well, then presumably you understand, Doctor, that if any one of those aneurysms goes, she could die in a matter of minutes. Yes. All right. Now, one of those aneurysms is at a junction of three arteries, so it's clearly unoperable. But... The other one can be removed by surgery, and it will reduce the risk of fatality by 50%. If everything goes well. And you call yourself a friend? Doctor, look, I, I know you're upset, and it, it certainly is a very grim situation. And... Hey, hey, I didn't come here for sympathy. I came here for a little help. Now, since you're such a, a good friend of Nell's, it occurred to me that maybe you'd have better luck with her than I've had. At what? Something has to be done. In my opinion, the treatment of choice is surgery. Well, Nell doesn't want surgery. She's just too afraid of what might happen. Something might go wrong. Nothing is going to go wrong. You don't know that. I mean, she could come out of it with an aneurysm repaired and damage from brain surgery. Doctor, that is a risk that we have to take. She doesn't want to take it. And I can't say that I disagree. After all, she, she wants to live whatever time remains to her with all her faculties. And furthermore, even if everything went well, she still doesn't want to waste her time in recuperation. All right. Well, what about the iron silicone infusion technique they developed out in California? Hmm? Well, it's worked in a few cases, but it's still very new. It's only been tried on a handful of people. There aren't any long-range survival statistics, and the chances of thrombosis are quite significant. So in other words, you don't want to do anything. I've considered everything there is to do, and so is Nell. Nell needs is somebody who will help give her some courage to fight. Right now, she's still in a state of shock at the idea of dying. She is not thinking clearly. Doctor, have you fully considered the danger of what you're suggesting? I mean, I think... I think we should leave this all to Nell. Your friend Finelli went out and found himself some answers to some of his own questions. And beyond that, he found some answers to some other things, too. I think you ought to know what they are. I don't understand. You answered all of his questions. 
a lot of what I told Finelli and you was a lie. What did you lie about? The fall wasn't an accident. I knew it wasn't. Now, wait, wait. Just hold it a minute. Let me tell you, okay? Okay. There's not much more I can say about the fall. It's when we get to the $6,500 that things begin to get complicated. Was it your money? Yes. And it was my retirement pay from the force, and I had put it into the savings account to keep Delia from getting her hands on it. But I didn't intend to transfer it to the campaign account. What was it for, then? A loan. You were going to lend somebody $6,500? Yes. Who? I didn't explain this part of it to Finelli because he and Nick Zabo know each other. And Finelli would figure out some way of getting the whole story out of Nick. What does Nick Zabo have to do with it? A friend of mine owed Nick Zabo close to $10,000. What friend? I didn't tell Finelli that, and I can't tell you either. You'll understand in a few minutes. The debt was overdue, and this guy was under a lot of pressure to pay. Well, what kind of a debt was it? Gambling. Mainly the horses. But I thought no one can prove that Nick Zabo's in the gambling business. <laughs> Knowing it and proving it are two different things, Mary. Anyway, the morning of the fall, I took the money out of the bank, and I stopped by the hospital to see Nick. He hadn't called me. He didn't offer me a campaign contribution, like I said. I said it had come to my attention that my friend, my friend owed him a considerable sum of money. And I asked Nick to cut off his credit. The guy shows all the signs of being a compulsive gambler, Mary. I know his family. I didn't want to see him get into serious trouble, you know. Well, what did Nick say to that? Just what I expected, that he didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> Because the, the thing Nick does not want is a hassle with the 12th Precinct where he knows I have some friends. So I hope it did some good. I don't know. Frank, why didn't you tell us this to begin with? I just don't understand. You will, honey. Just let me get through this the way it all happened. All right, sweetheart. Yes. My friend was busy that afternoon, and I, I couldn't see him. So when I came back to the hospital around 5, I still had the money in an envelope in my pocket. You came to see Pat about the party? Well, yes, among other things. I, I went up the east wing staircase, and whatever happened, happened, and I fell. Frank. Please, Mary, please, let me finish. I know you're going to have a lot of questions, honey, and, and I'll answer them, I promise. But let me get through this, OK? I'm sorry. I guess word got around pretty fast. My friend heard about the fall. He'd gotten a message I'd been in to see him. He assumed I had the money with me, you see. Nick was apparently leaning on him pretty hard. He was scared enough to go to the emergency room, and he managed to get the envelope out of my jacket. Frank! It's the truth, Mary. So I couldn't file the insurance claim because I knew what had happened to the money, and I'm going to get it back. But none of this makes any sense. Why did you feel that you had to lie about any of it? I'm going to have to go on lying about it, Mary. My friend has some very good reasons why he doesn't want his family or his professional associates to know he was in hock to Nick Zabo, which is why I didn't give Finelli any of the details. He only knows the guy was pressured to repay the debt. Can you understand that? I can understand it. But I don't understand who this person is or why you're protecting him. I don't want to do this, Mary. But if I don't tell you, Jack will. And he doesn't begin to understand what it's all about. Frank, you don't have to tell me anything you don't want to tell me. <laughs> yes, I do. But the problem is, this is going to change things with us. We're both going to have to give up something, which is your idea of who I am. Oh, Frank, no. I know who you are. I love you. Nothing can change that. 
I lied. And I'm going to go on lying unless Finelli decides to write about all this. Because the person that I'm protecting knows something about me. And if he tells what he knows, everything begins to come apart. Mother and Da would be hurt, and Dee, and the baby, even Bob. I'm pretty sure it would also cost me the election. What is it? I'm in love with someone who's not my wife. And we've loved each other for the past three years. After the election, I'd plan to leave Delia. Frank. My friend found out about it. He let me know he'd appreciate a loan in order not to share his information with the rest of Riverside. But that's blackmail. I guess it is. Who, um, who are you in love with? Jill Coleridge. A perfect day becomes a perfect nightmare. Wednesday, December 29th. They crashed. I know it. Fate takes a tragic turn. It was a bus full of kids. <laughs> now. Help! We need a doctor! They won't just hope for a miracle. Oh, no. They'll fight for it. I'm not going to let you go. General Hospital. If you're not using a Kodak printer, your printer may be using you. Switch to Kodak and stop overpaying for inkjet printer ink. Get $100 off a Kodak ESP7250 printer at these retailers. Erase doubt. Erase all those little voices in your head that say, look at that wrinkle. Introducing the Eraser Foundation from Maybelline. Our patented applicator and formula with collagen goes beyond covering, micro-corrects, micro-erases, fine lines, age spots. Erase them. For flawless perfection, the Eraser Foundation, only from Maybelline New York. And now, from the number one anti-aging makeup brand, a revolutionary pressed powder, Meet the Protector, our first powder with SPF 25 to protect and set. I'm ready. With Kmart's gifts under $10, you can spread the joy for less. Get Joe Boxer Thermals for the whole family just $4.99. Kids Graphic Tees $3.99. And Basic Edition Sweaters for the family starting at $9.99. They're smart, and there's Kmart Smart. We're all patients of his. He didn't tell you? I wanted to think that I was the only one. This is my past, my regret. Do not dwell in the past. Leo! Do not dream of the future. Nine years from now, something awful is going to happen to you. Am I dead? Oh my god. What if I made a mistake? A SoapNet original primetime drama. Being Erica. New season premiere Wednesday, January 26th at 11 on SoapNet. I want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. well, well, Bucky, I know about Nell's aneurysms. Now, why is she shutting me out so completely? Is it because of me, something I did or didn't do? I think it's because you're the one person that can make dying real to her. With the rest of us, she can pretend with you, she can. So, in other words, I'm the one who can make it worse. Except that maybe pretending isn't the answer. Is that the reason she won't agree to any kind of treatment? Because then she couldn't go on pretending? I don't know. Maybe. I don't want her to die. Bucky, there may be a chance for her to get some help. There's a new technique they've developed out in California. What sort of technique? Well, now they infuse a mixture of silicone and iron filings into the artery. Then they move it with an electromagnet to the weakened area of the artery wall. Yeah? Well, then the silicone hardens and it reinforces the artery wall so that the chances of a breakdown are much, much less. That sounds so simple. Yeah, well, they even do it under a local anesthetic. Well, aren't they contraindications? Yeah, well, there's always the danger of a clotting. If that happens, it could lead to a blood clot and thrombosis. And then it's still a highly experimental technique. But, Bucky, 
it's got to be a better risk than doing nothing at all. Seneca, if it were you, would you have it done? Yes. What did you suggest to Tom, no? I try, but he's not in any mood to listen to me. Annette Coleridge is totally ineffectual. He'll agree to anything she asks. Well, he doesn't agree with you about the new technique. Well, he's being cautious. Of course it's taking a chance, but doing nothing is taking a lot bigger chance. Yeah. Bucker, will you talk to Nell? Now, she won't listen to me. She'll give you a hearing. At least get her to consider it. Read up on some of the work they've been doing. That's all I ask. Well, I don't see any reason why she shouldn't do that. There isn't any. But, Bucky, I know you care about her. Well, I care about her, too. And I would not recommend this unless I was absolutely certain that it was the best way. Okay, I'll try. Whatever you do, whatever she says, don't back away, Bucky. Because that small aneurysm, the one we can treat, it could go any time now. Any time. Next, spend some time in Genoa City with the young and the restless. Later, see who's stirring up trouble in Pine Valley on All My Children. Only on SoapNet. Who's coming and who's going? SoapNet has the status update on your favorite stars. You know her as General Hospital's Emily and Rebecca. But now Natalia Livingston is moving to Salem on Days of Our Lives. How can I stay away? On One Life to Live, Brandon Buddy is saying so long. This is the right thing to do. While Terry Colombino is Landview's newest resident. That is amazing. Daniel Cosgrove returns to All My Children as Scott Chandler. Come here often. And General Hospital fans can now catch Tristan Rogers on The Young and the Restless. But that's a bonus. Keep up with the latest status updates on SoapNet. I am a non-attorney spokesperson. Were you or a loved one diagnosed with lung cancer? If so, we urge you to call the number on your screen now for a free legal consultation. Some lung cancers, along with the other cancers listed on your screen, may be linked to asbestos exposure. Exposure to asbestos in mills, factories, or while working as a plumber, electrician, plasterer, maintenance worker, or janitor may have put you at risk. In addition, because asbestos was widely used on ships, those working in shipyards, including Navy veterans, may have also been exposed. Asbestos has been used in many commercial applications, including insulation, fireproof fabrics, automotive parts, building materials, and small kitchen appliances. If you or a loved one was diagnosed with lung cancer or another asbestos-related cancer, call now for a free legal consultation. You may be entitled to compensation. Call 1-800-849-6478. Again, that's 1-800-849-6478. 15 seconds with Michael Noyne. Caleb is not concerned with what people think about him, which makes him a delicious character to play. I'm much more of a social being. I would not be good for long periods of time on a mountaintop. Catch Michael Nori on All My Children weekdays on ABC and weeknights at 8 on SoapNet. This week, I'm sorry. All Greenlee wants for Christmas is her best friend and her boyfriend's ex. I just wanted to start over with Ryan, and now you're pregnant with this child. Out of the way. My baby. Watch All My Children weekdays on ABC and weeknights at 8 on SoapNet. This week, this is her first Christmas without Cole. Please don't go, because I need you right now. We're engaged. Hi. I'm just getting married now. Watch One Life to Live weekdays on ABC and weeknights at 9 on SoapNet. People are talking about General Hospital's Lucky and Siobhan. D. Hunter Roscoe posted on Facebook, finally a love for Lucky. He and Siobhan are great together. Charlotte May adds, this is great. I hope it works out for these two. Laura Bruno says, men are always sexier when they're happy and in love. And Lori McPherson Draper sums it all up. They are just the cutest couple. Way to go, GH. I love this storyline. People are talking about General Hospital. Weekdays on ABC and weeknights at 10 on SoapNet. Jill? It began my first year of law school. I had no idea of what was happening to either of us. All I knew was I was more full of energy and excitement than I'd ever been in my life. I thought it was because I was really on my way, because I knew what I wanted and was going after it. Only I realized that what I wanted was Jill. 
Does Dee know? Yes. She apparently knew all along and didn't say anything. Huh. Frank, why did you marry Dee? Because she needed me. It's just as simple as that. Only, of course, it wasn't me she needed. It was security and acceptance and a sense of belonging somewhere. And you felt sorry for her. That was part of it. And she was pretty and sexy and very funny when she felt like it. She was so earnest and eager. And I believed if I made her feel loved and secure, she'd grow up. Only she didn't. No. And she resented any expectation that she should. She wouldn't do housework because she said it made her feel like a servant. She wouldn't save money because it, it made her feel poor. She wouldn't accept responsibility for anything because she, she was afraid she'd make a mistake. All of which was her way of staying in the center of my attention. And I knew it. But it made me more and more angry and detached. Frank, why didn't you marry Jill to begin with? Why'd you make such a mess out of it? And why? Why did you have little John when you knew you were in love with Jill? Little John wasn't planned, Mary. When we found out that Dieter was pregnant, Jill and I agreed much as we loved each other and felt so strongly about each other and the things that we shared, we agreed to stop it. And we did. Until one day, late, late this spring, I saw her in the park, reading in the grass. And I just went over to her to say hello. Oh, Frank, what are you going to do? I don't know. The fall changed a lot of things. Jill isn't making any demands. She never has. Dee is doing everything she can to make up for, to make it work. But I don't love her. I feel sorry for her and sad and more than a little guilty. But I won't ever love her again. Little John? I know. So, uh, someone found out about Jill and, and you lent him the money so he wouldn't tell? Yes. Oh, Frank. And then Jack began asking questions and turned up enough to put most of it together. His point was that he had reason to doubt a lot of what I said. and You were furious at him for being irresponsible. Only he hadn't been, and he wanted you to know. Thank you for telling me yourself. I'm sorry, Mary. About everything. Listen, um... I don't think I can talk about it anymore just now. I've got a lot of work to do over at headquarters, so I think I'll just go on over there and, and do it and think a little bit. OK? Sure. I'll talk to you later on. Thank you. In Port Charles, revenge is a priority, relationships are disposable, and good medical care is a necessity. Keep up with this fast-paced city with an all-new episode of General Hospital, weeknights at 10 on SoapNet.